What's up, FR Nation? It's Matt with FR Clothing and Supply, here to help you like what you work in. Today we're talking FR insulated bibs. So, are you ready? All right, before we jump into today's topic, I'd like to ask you to please hit that subscribe button below so you can stay up to date on all our new products and the tips and tricks to help keep you safe and comfortable out in the field. Also know that all the products we talk about are gonna be in the show notes below. So click on the link, jump over to our online store and pick yourself something up. We all know that there are insulated and uninsulated bibs. Today we're gonna to be talking about FR insulated bibs. And if you're wearing FR insulated bibs, that means it is cold and nasty outside. And if they're uncomfortable, now you're cold and uncomfortable. So I'm gonna go over a few key features to help you pick out a good pair of bibs. And then we're gonna give you some tips and tricks to help your bibs last longer and be more comfortable. All right, so I have here a Carhartt insulated bib, the Carhartt Quick Duck insulated bib, the Ariat insulated bib, and the Roscoe insulated bib. These usually come in a navy, khaki brown, or a black. We're gonna break down the outer shell, inner shell, and insulation package. Your outer shell is usually going to be a canvas duck material. Good for abrasion resistance, it's water and wind resistant, the higher the ounce of the outer shell, the more resistance you're gonna get, the more abrasion resistance you're gonna get, but it's gonna take longer to break in. So it's something to think about with the outer shell. Inner shell is going to be a quilted twill lining usually. So the same thing, higher the ounce, the thicker it's gonna be, the more insulation it'll provide. Uh, you wanna look for the feel of it. If it's rough, you don't want that because you're gonna have maybe shorts on underneath, it's gonna be up against your skin, you don't want that rubbing all day long. So inside the quilted twill is gonna be your insulation package. This is usually made out of a moto acrylic or this quick duck here from Carhartt is made out of a thin slit insulation. So you get a little thinner, uh, it's gonna be thinner and less heavy, but give you the same warmth. So this has got 150 grams of insulation, that thin slit, and then you got the typical moto acrylic insulation package here. Something to think about, these bibs right here on this Carhartt, that quilted twill lining only goes up to about right here on your chest. Some of these will go up, some bibs will go up all the way to the top of the chest. So make sure and check that out. Uh, if you want that extra insulation, you want it to go to the top of the chest, whereas this just kind of goes to right here. Okay, so that's a breakdown of the outer, inner, and the insulation package. Now here's a few things to look for when purchasing a bib. First color. Like I said, you've got khaki, navy, and black. Obviously khaki is going to show a lot of dirt, but on those warmer days it's not going to take in that heat as much as a dark color like black or navy. So that's just something you've got to decide. I have guys that love the khaki and other guys that just go with the black or the navy to hide the grime. Secondly, we're gonna talk about straps. Straps come with a plastic buckle here or they can do the traditional metal, like Roscoe has their traditional metal. And then how can you adjust them to make sure they're tight and fitting well? Right here we have Roscoe that's got a Velcro, pretty easy to adjust. We've got the Ariat, it's got a nice elastic band here and that stretches and, and cinches up really nice when you're out on location. The Carhartts are a little tougher, but once you get them in place, they're not going anywhere. So I would suggest adjusting the strap down here and then putting it on, clicking it in, and then it's locked in. If you want to adjust it again, you're going to have to unbuckle and readjust. So that's straps. Thirdly, we're going to talk about zippers. Zippers are really important and sometimes overlooked when buying bibs. You want to think about quality of zipper and how high the zipper goes up on the leg. Carhartt makes a nice quality zipper. It's brass, heavyweight. Ariat's got a nice heavyweight brass zipper. Roscoe's got a zipper that's brass, but it's a little lighter weight. Not as heavy as the other ones. And then the Carhartt Quick Duck has a brass zipper, but it's, I'd say it's a little more lightweight than the Carhartt Heavyweight Insulated Bib. Thinking about where the zipper goes up on the leg is really important. Most of the time your insulated bibs are gonna go from ankle to thigh, but um, sometimes they'll go ankle to hip as well. You want to think about how high the zipper goes up on your leg because if you're out in the field, your boots are muddy, you need to get out of your bibs quick. If you don't have a nice zipper that goes up to your thigh, 
you you can't slide them off easily. They're going to get muddy when you take them off. You're going to have to take your boots off. It's a mess. So if you have a nice thigh-high zipper, you can pull those bibs off. You can get them on quick, and you won't get them all muddy and messy. These four bibs I have are ankle to thigh, except for the Carhartt Quick Duck. This is their new bib. It's really comfortable. It's movable. My one complaint is that this zipper only goes up to the like shin or right around the knee. I, I would say, hey Carhartt, make that zipper go up to the thigh, and this would be a s even more solid of a FR insulated bib. Now let's talk pockets. You carry a lot of tools, you're gonna need the pockets to carry the tools. So, Carhartt Classic, we got two layers of pockets. Got a Velcro there to keep things secure. Ferriot's the same way, and Roscoe is gonna have a snap button instead of the Velcro. The nice thing about this Carhartt Quick Duck, their new insulated bib, it's got a lot of cool features. It's got a zipper pocket right here that runs the length of that front pocket so you can keep a phone secure or anything you don't want falling out of your bib. You've got uh, front pockets here. They usually have a pocket in a pocket to keep your cell phone more secure or change or whatever you have in there. Uh, you've got your back pockets right here, just regular back pockets. A lot of them come with the side pockets, like Roscoe has a nice belt uh, loop for your wrench and whatnot. Harriot's got a nice side pocket there for wrenches. Same thing with Carhartt. Same thing with the Carhartt Heavyweight. That's a breakdown of your pockets. Make sure you look it over. You get the right bib that has the pockets you need for the tools you want to put in there. Now we're going to move on to the most important thing, which is sizing. But to do that, I'm going to put on one of these bibs. So here we go. Okay, I'm in the Ariat FR insulated workhorse bib in black. Sizing is very important when you walk into the store. If you're wearing a t-shirt like this and some lightweight jeans and you try one on and it's snug but you're like, yeah, it's good, it's, it's probably not good because when you get out in the field, you're gonna be in cold weather if you're wearing bibs. You're probably gonna have layers on. You want something that's a little loose in the store. A big thing too is, I'm gonna back up here, you wanna give it the squat test too. You get in it, you want to squat, make sure there's room in the crotch. The crotch is the key here, folks. You want to make sure there's room there because if it's high up, it's uncomfortable, it's always rubbing, you want to have a little bit of room there. We do a little squat test, maybe some kicks, make sure it feels good. A rule of thumb when getting a pair of bibs is you want to go up a waist size to give yourself some of that room and go down an inseam. I'm going to throw up a chart here to give you my stats. I'm 5'11", 210 pounds. I wear a 35, 34 in the Ariat M5. I've tried on all of these bibs and I found the best sizes in each. The Ariat, I'm wearing a large 30. The Roscoe, I was wearing a 44, 30. In the Carhartt, I wear a 38, 30 or a 40, 30. It's right on the edge there. Depends on how many layers I'm gonna have. And that Carhartt Quick Duck, their new bib, I'm in a 38, 30 in that and I take the top button undone. I'll explain that later. You notice that I'm a 34 inseam in the jeans, right? And I went down to a 30 inseam in the bibs. Why did I do that? Because bibs are gonna drag on the ground if you get them too long. There's no reason to have a long bib. If you have too long of a bib, it's gonna drag on the ground, get mud on it, get gunk, no good. So this is a 30 and I could almost do a 28 and probably be okay. The key is the crotch. Like if the crotch is feeling good, then don't worry about the inseam. Get that inseam off the dirt. It's gonna make the bib last longer. Those are some keys for buying a pair of bibs. Now a few tips and tricks about bibs you probably didn't know. Did you know that most bibs have a little notch right here? What's that thing for? Well, you can put a gas monitor or clip a radio to it if you wanted to. Did you know, if you're getting too hot wearing your bibs, sometimes instead of taking them off, you can simply button the bottom, pull the zipper up, and that'll give you a little bit of airflow. Did you know that Ariat and Carhartt have their straps facing inwards? When you snap them together, it seems like you're putting them in backwards, but really you're keeping yourself safe. If the straps were facing outward, they'd hang down and be able to be caught in something. That's no good. Did you know the bibs have buttons on the side? <laughs> Unbutton them, you got more room to roam. Do you ever have a hard time getting your straps on? Well, it's pretty easy. What you want to do is grab the straps behind your back. Bend over a little bit, and then swing them over your shoulders. Then you just simply have to snap them into place, 
and you're good to go. Did you know that most insulated bibs have a double front knee? But they also have this little hole in the bottom. Why would they do that? Well, for two reasons. One, in case you get a rip up here and you get debris in there, it'll be able to drain out. And two, you can stick a foam pad up in there and you'll have yourself a knee pad. Pretty cool, huh? That's your breakdown on bibs. I hope this will help you get into a nice pair of FR insulated bibs. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in that comment section below. Remember, there's links to all these bibs in the show notes. Click on them, hop over to our website, pick yourself up a pair. All right, everybody, have a great day.